Artillery plays a vital role in the army through delivering devastating firepower to the enemy. A key component of the artillery's operation centres around the application of physics. We are at UNOA Junior College right now, borrowing their field to help with the topic. Claudia! Hello, MJ! Welcome to EJ! Yes! Oh my god, look at this! It's so beautiful! This is Claudia here from EJC Physics Department. We are actually here today for a simulated artillery competition. What competition? Meet my friend, Captain Chia. Hi, I'm Captain Chia. I'm the gun positioning officer from the 23rd Battalion, Singapore Artillery. I'm invited here today to host a simulated artillery challenge between EJC and Just Keep Thinking. So, are you guys ready? Uh, I've absolutely no idea why this is happening. Why are they prep me? Like, what's this? EJC eh. Okay lor, let's do it. <laughs> so, challenge one. Okay, you'll be set up. You have two tennis ball launchers in front of you and your task is to set it up in the shortest time possible. And then you'll fire off the tennis ball from here. Let's go! Now ah, uh, like, like yeah. now. Now ah. Uh. Yeah, now ah. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go, go. MJ will win. It was quite an interesting experiment. Uh, much like how we use retort stands and apparatus in the lab to actually build structures that we want for our experiment. Um, that's how it feels like actually, figuring out how things work. Oh my god, I'm not winning. No! Wait, what's this? Will we spoil your things? Sure. There's a reason why there's this thing here, right? So I'm supposed to get out, right? I mean, it's a bit similar to what I do during my teaching days. There are a lot of science experiments and we actually get the kids to build stuff. Oh, okay, I understand already, I understand already. Force it through. Yeah, it the weapon systems that the SAF uses ranges from a mortar to howitzers and even rocket systems such as the high mobility artillery rocket system HIMARS. The most commonly used is the locally designed and produced Fuel Howitzer 2000, FH2000, that is capable of firing fuel projectiles over distances up to 40 km. The FH2000 requires a crew of 6 to 8 soldiers to deploy and operate the system in the shortest time possible. Somewhat similar to what we are doing today with the tennis ball launchers because without the setup, we can't proceed with the firing yet. Oh. All right, stop. How do I stop? She's she's done, done. How really? Ah? Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> ah, that was close. Yeah, as you can see, uh, EJC won this part of the challenge. Oh. What a goal. Hey, go away. Challenge, yeah. Second challenge? Yep, we are ready for the second challenge. During the actual firing of the FH2000, the guns or the firers are unable to physically see the target. The fire has to rely on the information provided by an additional pair of eyes known as the fall observer to find their target. So for today, I'll be playing the role of a fall observer for the competition that is being held here. Here are the rules for challenge 2. The challengers will be given two sets of information, distance between them and the forward observer, and distance between the target and the forward observer. With this info, they have to calculate the angle to fire one shot and the closest to the yellow line wins. So the idea behind this competition seems pretty simple, right? I'm given the distance and I'm supposed to shoot my target, but to calculate the exact angle to hit my target is another thing altogether. Yo, Captain, we are ready. We need some information from you. Okay, one minute. One minute. Okay, the distance from me to your launcher is 74 meters. Okay. Distance from me to the float is 50 meters. Okay. What's your next step? I don't know eh. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't know. Claudia looks like she knows what's going on. So you're calculating the distance between? Um, between the launcher and the target. Ah! She actually gave the equation in the middle already. Alright, so the equation that we use is actually from the chapter of kinematics and it's actually based on projectile motion where we teach students how to split the motion basically into x direction and y direction independently and then from there we work on the x direction having a constant velocity and y direction having constant acceleration. What was the answer? Um, 13 degrees. Bye MJ! Wait! Wait! I, I almost... I need calculator! Okay. Eh! I think I got it also eh! Then my angle will be... Ding ding right. ding ding! Tatina! Ah, uh, yes. Wow, she got it! Yeah. Okay, 
so basically when this launcher is parallel to the ground, this string here is at 90 degrees. When we move it up, then you see that. So the angle between 90 and whatever that's here gives us the angle of launch. Okay, Captain, we are ready to launch. I'm ready to observe. Thank you. Two, one, fire. Oh, 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 more. Eh? Ah, uh, I got Risha, I got Risha, I got Risha. Okay, can I? Oh, eh? Uh, of course, I must say it was a little bit disappointing. As a physics teacher, of course, I always wish that my equations would tell the whole story. But unfortunately, sometimes in real life, there needs to be many other factors that, um, that come into play. Back in the earlier days, there were no digital systems to help us in our computations and firing. We had to make do with our trusty radios, pen and paper, and a whole lot of brain power to get our shots accurately onto the target. However, today as the SAF progresses and more technology is accessible to us, we have innovated and enhanced our capabilities over the years to allow our tasks to be executed in a more efficient manner. For Challenge 3, it's the exact same challenge as Challenge 2. The only difference is that I'll be the one providing them the information on what angle to fire at later. Can you give us the information for our last mission? In the modern digitized method, the four observers relay back information to their command post. We actually have a software to assist us in the complicated calculation. As this competition is a simplified one, we'll be using Excel to simulate the calculation. Okay, for our last mission, the angle to fire will be 70. Yes, that's all. I love technology. It's come a long way. Are we ready to launch? Launch what? Oh, oh okay. Lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do it. Hey, yeah. Captain, Captain, I'll see you not. And after we fire, four observers, which in this case is me again, will have to be the eyes on the ground to guide the firers to bring the shot over the target accurately. How do I do, Captain? Yeah, about 25 meters short of the line. Thank you. I'll try to improve. <laughs> sure, the boy is just there. Yeah, 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 about three meters. Three meters away. Maybe your angle has to be slightly lower. So for the last competition, we were just given the angle and that actually simplified a lot of things. I didn't have to like calculate, you know, what angle I had to use myself. Three, two, one, fire. Hello, Captain. Now you're 25 meters after the line. Okay, hopefully <laughs> take average. <laughs> and launch. Your last shot was like, like about 10 15 meters short of the goal. But your first two were like consistently 3 meters away. Normally, if I were to like hit it that near, like honestly, it's good enough. Because like the, the ammunition will uh, go off, it will explode. So the personnel in the vicinity will get affected by the blast. It's 3, 2, 1, go. That looks good! <gasps> Hi, Captain. Very close, yes, uh, two, two meters, meters. Oh, okay. uh, away from oh the line. God. After I gave the initial adjustment, both their shots landed very near to the target. While it's not impossible for this to happen out in the actual operations, but it does require a certain amount of skill to get them that close as well. We have come to the end of the challenge, and I think for MJ, you did very consistently across all the shots that you shot out today. And for Claudia, uh, your shots are all really close to the target itself. So I would say that today, both of them are the winners for today in terms of consistent and accurate performance from each of them. Artillery really isn't an easy vocation. Like, I thought I'd be able to hit the target very easily, you know, by knowing the science behind it. But no, eh, there's a lot of factors involved that affect the trajectory, and there's also a lot of physics applied to it. Yeah, I think this comes with experience. I think I've gained a lot of respect for what the army has been doing, especially for the arty guys. I hope that what we have done today has given you a better idea of how the artillery works. 
as well as how physics comes into play in our operations. If you do love big guns as well as a lot of physics, feel free to join the artillery family as we'll be more than happy to welcome you. Thank you Captain Chia and Claudia for joining me on this challenge today and thank you EJC for lending us your beautiful feel right here. It's really nice, it's really pretty. That's all for today. Just, Just keep thinking! thinking.